God released my friend, yes, the angel of the Lord. The Bible tells us when he sent him to destroy it, it says, that he, it says in verse 15, as he was destroying the people, the Lord beheld it and he repented him of the evil. Instead of the angel that destroyed it, it is enough, stay now thine hand. Everybody better be glad he said that. I mean, everybody around better be glad that God said that. David, he knew he was right when he said, let me fall into the hands of this merciful God. Even though many would die, he, he still chose to fall into the hands of this merciful God. But this angel of God, my friend that was on this mission, my friend yes, there, was doing exactly what God had commissioned him to do. And may I tell you tonight that when God judges America, it'll be bad. I said it will be bad. And people think, well, we're so great. I don't really know if we can be conquered or not. You mark her down. Brother, when God, if God wants to bring us down, God, He certainly can do it. He certainly can do it. The Bible tells us, my friend, yes, that the angel of the Lord stood in verse 15. He stood by the threshing floor of one in the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord in the earth and the heaven having a sword drawn in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. This was really bad. But the story does get better. Thank God for that. God showed David this, this vision, if you will. An angel with a sword drawn. There I'm talking about slaying men left and right. I'm talking about taking them out. And the Bible tells us when David saw this, that him and his men, they prayed, they fell on their faces. The word of God tells us in verse 16, they clothed in sackcloth and they fell upon their faces. And that's when he began to cry to God and said, listen, this, it was I. It, it wasn't everybody else, it was me. In other words, if you really want to kill everybody, in other words, just please don't kill them, but kill me. And so the Bible tells us that God, he took this man who was David's seer, if you will, the Bible tells us that he was, in verse 9, And the Lord spake unto Gad David's seer. The seer, first of all, there sent the message of, 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 of about what was to be destroyed. And now, when God has mercy and David prays, and it looks like he repents, God sends the seer, if you will, there back to David and tells him to go down to the threshing floor of a man named Ornan the Jebusite and there make an altar. Now, the, the, these men were called seers at first. Before there was a name prophet, they were called seers, and it was simply because they could see things. That's what they could do. They could, they could see things. They, God's men, God was using them. But may I tell you tonight, I understand we're not living in that day, but do know this, in the book of Hebrews, the Word of God tells us that God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers, has spoken unto us in these last days by His Son. God is still speaking to people through His Son. And tonight, it could be that He's speaking to you. Jesus will speak to you. I mean, literally, in your heart, He will speak to you. And don't think that it's just some um, their made-up idea, something the preacher come up with. God will speak to you. And may I tell you this, you need to listen when God speaks to you. If you're saved tonight and God's dealing with you about things in your life, do know this, God don't play games. He's not joking. He's not playing games. God's serious about this. Whenever your friends try to entice you, do remember this. There's much harm to be done. There's much damage. There's consequences that will be brought about. That, you know, the Solomon put it like this, My son of sinners enticed thee, consent thou not. That's what he said, wouldn't he? In other words, if people try to get you to do things, you don't have to do it. I mean, you, you can say no. You can say no. I mean, I, I mean many times we think you know, we, we're just kind of falling in with the crowd, but you, you don't have to do not what the crowd is wanting you to do. But this, this man named... That old man here, he owned a threshing floor, and this, this prophet, this seer, if you will, God had told my friend that there, you know, the seer Gad to go and tell David there to go down to this threshing floor. And there to make an altar, to build an altar. And this statement is made here. You know, whenever Ordan saw what was going on, the Bible tells me in verse 20 that Ordan and his four sons hid themselves. <laughs> they was threshing wheat. They had saw what was going on. They was terrified. 
Now, they was obviously one of the last families in Jerusalem. But all, all, of, all the Jebusites did not get run out. This man here was still there. Him and his sons, they saw what God was doing, and it terrified them. May I tell you tonight, you know, lost people, when they come into the church, it ought to bother them. Right. Right? I, mean, I mean, it ought to. I mean, not that we want them to feel uncomfortable because we're hateful, but I, may I tell you this, there's an issue with the church when lost people can come in and amongst the people of God and hear the preaching and the Word of God and say, oh, it don't mean nothing to me. I mean, it don't mean anything to me. I was reading the other day in the New Testament whenever there's this verse, and I can't tell you the, even the chapter of the verse, but it, it, there's a place where the Bible tells us where that the Lord, He was around the doctors of the law, the Pharisees, and the Bible tells me that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And I got to reading it, and there wasn't nobody sick. Physically speaking, there wasn't nobody sick, but the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I mean, religious people need healing. It might be tonight that you've, that you've joined a church back years ago, and you think, well, joining a church, it was the answer. Joining the church is not the answer. Amen. Christ, He's the answer. Amen. Jesus, he, He's the answer. And tonight, my friend, yes, there I want to look at the drift of people. And these scriptures that sold out to God, they gave it all. Whenever David told Lord and said, "Listen, I, I, you know, here's what we need. Here's what God's told me to do," Lord and said, "Listen, I've saw it, I've heard it, I believe you, and here's what I want to do." He said, the "Bible tells us in verse 23, he said, I give thee the oxen for the burnt offerings, the threshing instruments for wood, the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. I'll give you everything I've got." Amen. In other words, if that's what we've got to do, that's what we've got to do. He said, I, I, I will give it all. Now, I want to say this. He said, I will give it all, but he wouldn't give it all. Because, because David, he wouldn't take it all. He was willing to give it all, but David was not going to take it all. And he said, I'm not going to sacrifice anything to God that costs me nothing. In other words, there, it's not a real sacrifice if it didn't cost you anything. That's just what, that's what it's, the Bible's telling us. And David said, no, I'm, I, I, I pre, in other words, I do appreciate the very fact that you're willing to give me the oxen, the threshing floor, the instruments, all these things. I do appreciate them, but I will not take it there for free because I cannot consider it a sacrifice. It would cost me nothing. It would be like me saying, I'm going to go buy me a new truck, but I'm going to use his money to do it. That's right, you're right. That's right, and that's pretty much it. I want to say this tonight. Many times we, we, we as God's people, we, we're, we, you know, we, we think about sacrifices, we think about blood. We think about a cross, we think about an Old Testament where the, where the blood of animals ran like a river, if you will. But I want to say this tonight. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that the apostle besought the Romans to, my friend there, to provide them bod their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the reasonable service. My friend, we as the people of God, we must understand, my friend, that we are to be a living sacrifice. Amen. The man said, I give it all. He was willing to give it all. I think people in the, in the, in the Bible gave it all. I think about Abraham, he gave it all. Whenever God called Abraham to leave Ur of the Chaldees and go into a land, God said, I want you to go into a land where you've never been, and I'll show you the way whenever you get there. The Bible tells me that he went out not knowing whither he went. Amen. He didn't have no GPS. No. He didn't have no cell phone for guidance. He didn't have anything there hooked up to his camel there pointing the way. He didn't even have a compass. But I want to tell you what, he just went out like God said, and he went out not knowing whether he went, but he believed God. Amen. Amen. And you know the story of Abraham. Now, you know that God blessed him and there well, at the age of 100 years old and his wife 90, how that God gave them a child. The future of Israel hinged on that child living. The entire history, I mean, the future of a nation hinged on that child living. That child had to leave them. But there come a day when God said, I want you to go, I want you to, go to Mount Moriah and there offer thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. He might have told his wife, said, We're going to go to church here today or two, and uh, we'll be back. He carried Isaac with him to Mount Moriah. And I want to say this. He told the servants, y'all stay at the bottom of the hill while, while I and the lad go yonder and worship and we return. Yeah, right. 
he believed God enough to know, even though God had told him to slay that child, he said that we, we will be back. Because you see, in the, in the book of Hebrews, the word of God tells us that, he, that by faith he would do this. He accounted that God was even able to raise him from the dead. Yeah. Even if he did kill him, he knew that God could raise him up because there would not be an Israel. My, there would be no Israel if that child would have died and never came back. But he believed God to the point. In other words, what I'm saying is this. He gave it all. He gave it all. Michael, whenever he gave that child, Michael, yes, there, when he laid him down, he bound him up with Michael, there with the ropes and there laid him on an altar. And Michael, yes, there had the wood all over him and there with a knife right back. And I was thinking, that's my daddy. That's my daddy. But I've got enough confidence in him. If this is what he thinks God wants us to do, we're going to do it. You know, I want to say this. Many times we talk about faithful Abraham. I want to say this. Thank God for faithful Isaac. Amen. I'm talking about the laid down without a fight. Malcolm, yes, Arab, he was our heavenly Isaac, if you will. Malcolm, yes, he was the one that laid his life down. Amen. He was, Malcolm, the picture of Christ. Malcolm, yes, Arab, that was willing to give it all. And Malcolm, yes, Abraham that day, Malcolm was willing to give it all. He was willing to, Malcolm, to give everything. Thank God for that. Tonight we read in the Bible others who gave it all. In Acts chapter 20 we read about a man named Paul. This great missionary. I mean you, when you saw where he went the Holy Ghost was guiding him everywhere that he went. From this place you know he'd go from Bithynia into you know Asia and Mycenae and all these other places and you know he, he wanted to go to one place but the Bible tells us but the Spirit suffered him not. In other words, he would just go where God wanted him to go. But there was a time in Acts 20 whenever he got to, he got to Ephesus. And the Bible tells me that he called the elders of the church together. Yeah. This was the second time there, I do believe. And he said, you know, whenever I, whenever I left my leaders and I, whenever I got here, he said, I just want to remind all of you. He said, how that I, I, have, I have lived before you. He said, I've taught you. And there I've done the best I know how to do. And I can't quote all the verses, but I remember what the Bible tells us. He said, and how I kept back nothing. I didn't keep back anything. He said, I served the Lord with humility of mind and tears and many temptations there by the lying and weight of the Jews. Everything that I faced, I, I faced what I did. And there I wanted to live right and do right. And I wanted to help you, amen. And he said, because I did, I said, I kept back nothing. He said, I kept back nothing. What about you tonight? What are you holding back? We read about a, a, a widow. You've heard the story of the widow and the two mites. The Bible tells us that a little poor lady. You know, sometimes we judge, we judge poor people and think maybe they failed in life. Let me say very plainly and clear to you tonight because somebody's poor, that don't mean they're a failure. I made a statement here back at church. Some of the best Christian individuals, I, individuals that I've ever known walking this earth, they didn't have much. They didn't have a lot. But they was clean, they was neat, they was decent, they wanted to live right and do right. But I want to say this, that, that poor widow, there she went in with that, that day and she dropped in the, Jesus was just watching them. And there are these Pharisees, they're just taking their wallet out, doing this, just throwing all their money in. They was casting in of their abundance. The Bible tells us that she threw in two mites. He told those standing around him, he said, you see over yonder? He said, they cast in of their abundance. He said, but she, she gave all the living that she had. He said, but she of her penury cast in all. She gave it all. I mean, as far as she was concerned, God could have it all. She knew she was broke. She knew she was poor. She knew she didn't have anything. But yet she gave it all. She gave it all to God. And my friend tonight, God wants us to give everything to Him. Amen. Give it all to God. My friend David thought, my friend, the problem with the senses was this. He thought because of his power, his might, his strength. Maybe this thing's about David. Maybe, maybe David needs some attention. The worst thing a pastor or a preacher will ever do is think, well, maybe, maybe I need some recognition. As you sang before the church, maybe you think, I need some attention. 
as you teach Sunday school, maybe you think, I need some recognition. Because you do a devotional, because you're a Sunday school superintendent or teach a class, you might think, well, maybe I need some attention. I want to say, it's not about us. It's about Him, amen. It's about the Lord. It's about giving it all to Him, giving the glory to Him. Because it's about Him. Tonight, I want to say this. Church will get really good when we get it, when we give it all to Him. When we give it all to Him. David, he went and he built this altar. And he did exactly what Gad had told him to do. As God commanded the Lord, or as God commanded Gad to kill David, David did as he was told. The Bible tells us in the, in, the, in the end of our text tonight, it says, And David built there an altar, in verse 26, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called the Lord, called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Thank God for answered prayers. Amen. 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 That's, that's what I'm saying in verse 26. And he called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven. May I tell you tonight that God still answers prayers? Amen. I mean, it's not like a wish list whenever we, whenever we bow down and pray. I, I, I get that. We are, we are to pray according to God's will. But God does still hear and answer prayer. Amen. And thank God when he, do, when, when he does answer prayers. I wish I could tell you tonight that He's always answered every prayer for me right when I wanted Him to. But many times it was weeks down the road, maybe months down the road. But He did, he did answer the prayer. So a lot of times, too, God, He may answer with a no, and if He does, no is an answer. No, no, no is an answer just like yes is. If God told you no, He answered your prayer. He answered your prayer. Don't act like because many times because we don't get what we want, we think, well, we'll mope around and act like, well, we just, God didn't answer our prayers. We're to pray that God's will be done. Amen. And I don't ask you this. Have you gave it all? Have you gave it all? We read about people in the New Testament and the Old, people that gave it all. You know, it's a popular saying amongst our soldiers here in America. You know, I, and I thank God for Veterans Day on November the 11th. And that's very touching, and I appreciate our veterans, and I, I want to honor them. I'm thankful for them. Yes, sir. I love them. They, they deserve respect. Amen. They're to be recognized for what they did. Yes, sir. But I want to say this, that holiday that we celebrate in May, in May, that Memorial Day, that's for people that did literally give it all. You know, but you've heard the saying, all gave some, but some gave all. There were some that went overseas, thinking they would come back home to see their baby girl, thinking they might get to come back home and see their children. They never made it back. I mean, that, that, that they paid for your liberty and for mine with blood. I'm talking about people with a backbone like a saw log that was not a coward, that was willing to stand up and fight for their nation. I'm talking about love their country enough. Not going yes, to stand for the red, white, and blue. And may I tell you tonight, I believe it's still time today that we stand up for America. We may not be a soldier in the military, but it's time that we as the people of God stand up for our nation and say right is right and wrong is wrong. And brother, we need to claim back a nation that the devil has tried to take from us. And brother, yes, do the best we know how to get back to the, the way things used to be. Amen. Some did because they gave it all. The Bible tells me on Calvary. God gave his son. He gave his son. I would ask you what John 3, 16 said. You know, you know what it says. For God, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, the preacher put it like this. He said, God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And may I tell you this, God, he gave it all. Did God give his son or did God do it himself? The Bible tells me to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God, he gave it all. He, he gave it all. Now, and there when he died for you on Calvary, he gave it all. He didn't just give part of it. He said, I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. amen. He was willing to do it all, give it all. Amen. 
Christ, he gave it all. Yes, he did. I want to say, whenever the soldier walked up and pierced his side, and forthwith came blood and water, you put her down, brother, he had given it all. My friend, that body was drained. After six cries on the cross, the seventh went like this. It is finished. It is finished. He gave it all. Nowadays we can preach about an old rugged cross and it don't bother people anymore. No, no more weeping anymore. The days of the shouts it seems, seems to be behind us now. We want to live in the past, talk about the good old days. But I want to say this. I really want to enjoy right now. I, I, I want to enjoy July the 10th, 2024, don't you? I mean, I, I, I realize that heaven's going to be grand and I, and I can't wait to get there. I'm prepared to go, but I ain't ready to go. But when, he, but when he wants me to go, I mean, it'll be time to, to move out of here, to step out of this world into, into the glory land, and thank God for the blessed day. It'll be, amen. amen. But I realize that's down the road, and I look back in days past about how things used to be, and I wish it could come back. But, brother, we must not live in the past. Right. It's time to claim right now. Right. What, my brother, my, I mean, my, my brother, what we can have, I'm talking about, we look back in days gone by, what did they have that we don't have today? I want to say this. What they had access to, we've got access to. There's not anything changed. By, the Bible tells us that by faith we have access. Amen? Into this grace wherein we stand. I mean, through faith in the Holy God, my friend, yes, we, we've got access to what they have. But nowadays, we, we're worried about a phone, we're worried, worried about a TV, we're worried about a job, we're worried about a trip, we're worried about a land, about some land, we're worried about a home, we're worried about what so-and-so thinks, what so-and-so doing. We walk into the church ready to go when we get there. We can't wait to leave. We worry about how long the preacher preached. And we complain about everything that's going on while we're there. And if we don't complain while we're there, we'll complain when we get home after, about how things was when we get there, or when we was there. Exactly. I want to say this. God gave it all. God gave it all. A man came running to Christ one night. He knelt down to him. If you read the account of this man, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he had everything in life that, yes, that, that a person has. Yes, he did. He's called the rich young ruler. Right. And if you put all three stories together, you can figure out he was rich, he was young, and he was a ruler. Sure was. He had yes. money, he had his youth, and he had power. Yes, he, did. he he had it all. Nowadays, people's like, man, I wish I had that. He, he, he had it all. Sure by, by the world's standards, he did. he did. But he was going to hell. You look at somebody nowadays, we, we all, for some reason, we want to get envious of somebody because they drive a new truck, or because they're in debt up to their eyeballs, or because they own a lot of things and, and they're in debt. We, we become envious of people like that. You, you don't know their heart. You, you don't know what kind of trouble they've got. I mean, them and their wife may cuss each other out every night before they go to bed. I mean, I want to say this. I'm not judging anybody, but this, this rich young ruler... He said, good master, what must I do to have eternal life? Well, we'll say this, he went to the right place. He did go to the right place. He said, what does the commandment say? He said, well, he said, thou shalt not kill, shalt not steal, shalt not bear false witness. He said, you told him all the commandments. He said, he said all these I've kept from my youth up. He said, what, you know, what I like. Jesus looked at him and said, Lackest thou one thing? Go sell everything you got and give the money to the poor. Take up your cross and follow me. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. The Bible tells him he could have, but he wouldn't do it. Let me say this he wouldn't do it. He could have done it, but he wouldn't go and do it. The Bible tells me he was grieved and he walked away sad because he had great possessions. In other words, you see, where his heart was at was in his riches. Where his heart was at was in his possessions. And that's why Jesus said, lackest thou one thing. In other words, he was not willing to say, I give it all. I want to say tonight, you'll never be saved as a, as a lost person until you give it all. 
You might say, I, I, I'd kind of like to be saved tonight. I know I'm lost. I know I'm going to hell. I know things is not right in my heart. I've joined the church, but I'm still not saved. My friend, you must give it all, amen. amen. You've got to give it all. Many times we think, well, about 95% should work. God wants it all. Until you, real, until you realize you're going down for the third time. And the lifesaver is in the hand of a holy God. Waiting to be thrown to you. Until you cry out for mercy. Until you plead guilty. Until you ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. Confess you're a sinner. Believe from the depths of your heart that God gave his son to die for you. And you're willing to repent, turn from your wicked ways. And call upon him. I ain't going to do all that. You go straight to hell. If you keep that mentality, I ain't going to do all that. You'll go to hell one day. There'll be no hope for you. You've got to give it all. you got to give it all. When I got saved that night, I knew I was headed to hell. I, that night, I, a little 11-year-old boy wasn't raised in church, didn't have much, didn't know much. And I knew mom and daddy loved me. I was always told I was a good little boy. I kind of believed that. I did kind of believe that. I was a good little boy. But that night when the preacher got through, I was a bad little boy. There's something about the gospel that night that showed me I was a sinner. And even, even though I was young, even though I was broke, I know all that night I wanted to be saved so bad. All I knew that night was this, is that I needed to go to the altar. And then I'd have cried, oh, Lord, save me. Save me. I didn't care who was looking that night. There at first, I thought, I don't, I don't even know what to do. I don't know. I don't, I, this is new. I, don't, I didn't know anything. But I'm going to say this. The Spirit of God pulled me with strong cords of love and led me to an altar. That night, I was willing to give it all. I'd have given my last breath. I'd have given the very last drop of blood that I had. There to keep from dying and going to hell. I want to ask you tonight, would you give it all? You might say, I'll never. I'll never in my life give it all. You mark this down on July the 10th on a Wednesday night. A little missionary Baptist preacher passed by friendship at Red Bay and told you there's a way for you to be saved. But you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, no, I'll go my own way. I'll take my chances. If you continue on with that thinking, one day you'll perish in an eternal fire. There'll be no hope. You can cry. You can beg. You can plead. You can do whatever you want to do. But once you get there, there's no turning back. There's no coming out. I'm asking you tonight, are you willing to give it all? Are you willing? As we stand, as we stand. If God's speaking to you tonight, would you please come? If you're here and you're a Christian, you say, Preacher, I know that I'm not living the way that I need to, and I need to give it all. Come right now. There may be somebody in your family this evening that, that depends on you, that needs your prayers, need your witness, they need your testimony, they need to see Christ in you, and you know you're not living right, you're not doing the things you ought to do as a child of God. I want to say this, please give it all. Yeah. David said, I, I, I have, you know, I've served the Lord, Lord my, with my whole heart. G give it all. But Senator, if you're here tonight, God gave his all for you. I want to ask you this night, will you give your all to him? He paid the price. And I want to say this. God will impute his righteousness into your wicked, evil, sinful heart if you'll put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You might say, but preacher, you don't know how big of a sinner I am. I may not, but I want to say this. I know how big of a Savior he is. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about he's a big Savior. He's a wonderful Savior. Amen. You may have went a long way in the wrong direction and nobody around standing by you tonight may know what you've done but God, He does. And God, He knows your heart tonight. If God's speaking to you, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. The Bible tells us that today if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Today is the accepted time. Right now, right here, this night, right now is your time as we sing.